Okay. That doesn't make any sense. So right here they're constructing you you flying heading two seven zero. Uh because we want to catch the QDM two seven zero inbound uh ADF. We are flying heading two seven zero, the ADF is left of us. Now we add 30 degrees to the 15 degree deviation and turn left by 45. That means we then are flying heading 225. Now the needle is point is is to our right. And now we fly a little bit longer until the needle is a bit less than 45 degrees right from us and then we turn left onto heading 270 and that, that doesn't make sense it should be a right turn Okay, that's some practices. I have our roots, that's the next course. It's just some airway designator schooling. It's about sits and stars.
And here's just a remark that in Germany it's mandatory to uh, also file the SID and the STAR uh, in the flight plan. And that's why in a route. And that also applies to Austria, France, Ireland, and Spain. In Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, and Swiss, um, you don't file this at all the star. And you even ask to delete that. That's interesting because I never knew which countries are also having that. Uh, Alright, but this lag is all about flying. Uh, we just want to take the short description here and to make a more sophisticated flight planning. Um, and here it's still ETNU. Uh, since this is also the old ICAO and our destination will be EDOP Neubrandenburg to Parchim <laughs> so that's basically the two airports that we're flying to and now, after the departure, we leave the control or the traffic circuit of Neubrandenburg to the north and capture the radial 250 um, FLD. So that means, first of all, we're flying to the north. So I want to have the NDBs right here. And then we will need the NDB PI, Schwerin Uh So we're flying north. Um, to capture that radial right here. That radial 250. And that is right here. So the intersecting point would be somewhere right here. So we're flying first to there, then to there. Uh, follow the radial. Oh, that's even wrong. Well, yeah, so we're flying north and then we capture the radial 250 outbound. We we'll follow that radial about 3. Point, uh, so that's quite easy because now in Flight Sim Command, now you can just use that right here. And that's the radial. And that's. Oh no. I need to write that. 35 nautical miles heading 250. And that's exactly over Echo Delta Oscar Whiskey. That's also what was in the uh, we want to delete that. So that that's what we do. Fly north, we capture that radial 250 fly until here, that's 35 DME, then we capture the QDR90 of PI, uh, disregard, from 35 DME, that's right here, uh, we turn to the south, that means we're flying south, and we want to capture the QDR Zero nine zero, so we just estimate a point right here. Uh, 
That is the QDR, not the heading, because the heading is always with the magnetic deviation. So that will be right here. And then we need to delete that waypoint. So we're first flying to here, then we're flying south um, to capture the QDR 90 PI. Fly over the station, so the next waypoint would be the station itself. <coughs> we overfly that and uh, want to hold the track for about five minutes. We will be flying up around 200 knots. So that's. Let's take something easier. Let's take 180 knots. That will be. Uh, three nautical miles per minute. So there would be 50 nautical miles approximately. 50 nautical miles on this same radial. That's radio 270. Here, something's wrong here. That fixes definitely off track. So let's just delete that and delete that. Hmm. Okay, that should be about it. Fifteen nautical miles, that would be about here. Uh, for five minutes, capture the QD M140, that means we make a right turn. And capture the QD M140. And that would be 180. 320. I have no idea how I'm supposed to do that. Just pretend that will be right there. Now we fly over that again, again, and enter the control zone via Sierra. But we want to fly one nine zero.
right there, then right there to enter the control zone. So that should be about it. Flying that radial, flying south, capture the QD R90 PI, then fly on that track for five minutes. Capture the QD M140 PI. But according to their rule, Curious because ten parallel. Whatever parallel to a station means, you can turn parallel to a point because a point is the thing. Add 30 degrees to your relative. So basically, okay, I got it. That would mean we would be flying right this. Then we add 30 degrees, so that's about right, the point. So we overfly that, overfly that, enter control zone via Sierra, and that's it. We just gotta take care the control zone has an upper limit of 2,000 feet. Um, just need to refresh that. Uh, and B, no. Oh, what was the car IKO of the Brunberg ADBN? <laughs> OP. Schwerin Parking. Just taking a look at the IKO chart, verify that this is still all the same, yes it is. PI with a frequency of triple three. No, this is also for, I mean, this is only a hobby for me also, but, uh, well, if you're simulating <laughs> flying, uh, that's all part of flying. Uh, it's not only steering left, right, up and down, faster and slower, it's also navigate. Um, that's the second part about flying. Aviate, navigate, and then there's this third part, communicate. And we are all about the navigate part right now. So, this is it. GPS. We'll just keep that on a second screen for the reference. It's becoming a little bit dark already and we want to fly daytime. So we'll skip that. So the battery is not yet flat, although it has been. Oh, yeah. It should be flat, however. I guess I've been letting that run for quite some time. Uh, let's just try if we can still get the engines running. Yeah. 
Yes, we are. We're flying a Beechcraft, uh, Beech 200 turboprop aircraft, twin engine. Um, the developer of that aircraft is Carinado, making pretty nice planes. So that's our engines running nice and smoothly. We just need to shut that down. battery is going to take some time to recharge but well, that's okay uh, as for the ADF we want to use triple three Should be. No, we're not receiving anything, anyways. So that's okay. Yes, of course. Uh, that's what simulation is all about. It's uh, simulating the aircraft with all its systems, and of course, learn that. And. Of course, we're not doing everything perfectly right, um, since there is some procedural stuff that we're not really obeying, like uh, the batteries will be flat in real life right now. But there's manuals to all that stuff, um, and if you really want to take that to a little bit more sophisticated level, all you need to do is take your five minutes and read the manual and you will be able to operate such an aircraft. So, I want to fly at least 2,000, depending on the visibility, I'm trying to head for 2,500. So, and we just want to file that flight plan. We're still flying as Disco in a Beach 200 with that equipment. This time I'll fly from EDBN. To ED. OP via direct via PI takes about 30 minutes. The alternate is um, Lage. And that's it. Connect here and wait for the weather because now I'm using IVAO weather. And since that IVAO weather has some smoothing options, it's going to take some time until it has actually 
adopted with the weather to uh, the present conditions. He's working on the winds and stuff. Thanks for following Sadra, by the way. Now that's us. We parked a little bit close to that hangar. <laughs> but it's okay. Just taxi out here. Um, the winds should be still favoring runway two seven, and we just want to set up that real quick because we want to capture the radial two five zero. Friedland VOR. So all we need to do is make that needle point to 250 so that there is a course of 250 and I can do that quite easy because I got panels for that that's it so after departure we want to fly north and intercept that radial and that's it for the moment text lights on Uh, whew, actually, it's not anymore because I realized that, um, yeah, just a little bit of cutting and editing with uh, Twitch is just enough for my needs at the moment. But thanks for the offer, anyways. Let's just verify if we still got the correct VOR dialed in. Uh, the Morse code. If you listen closely to that, now watch it. That's it. Short, short, long, short. Short, long, short, short. Long, short, short. That's it. So release those brakes. Usually yes, but there is no ATC station online right here at the moment. Uh, and uh, also the air airport that we're just flying from is an uncontrolled aerodrome. So at night time in the airspace there where we are, we should get a clearance. Um, well, at least as w when we're climbing above 1,000 feet above ground level. Uh, but you can see here that is Neubrandenburg and there is no control zone around that so it's an uncontrolled aerodrome so even if there was and even in real life you don't need to contact the controller but there would be flight information service of course that we could uh, that we would um, take if there was a controller online to provide us with traffic and weather information
And in terms of aviation, you don't talk about permissions, you talk about clearances, by the way. So let's just set up our autopilot for the after departure. feet per minute. That's it. You can also show uh, the needles of the CDI in the HSI. So the next intersection is ours. That's the section of Bravo. Nobody coming. So at an uncontrolled aerodrome in real life, for example, uh, there would be still a radio frequency and that on that radio frequency, uh, since there is no controller, you just report your intentions. So that would be now lining up, um, joining traffic circuit runway 27. This is X-Plane at the moment. So I'll put the bleeds off. Well, like for what I was just doing, um, calculating interception courses and stuff like that, um, you just can't do that with EFAS, or th there would be no way uh, that I um, that I know of how you would be handling that with EFAS. Um, that's why I'm using Flight Sim Commander for stuff like that. too high here. So that we can see the ground at least. Trim that aircraft out a bit. I'm 
now. You can see that the green bar is now moving. That means that we are intercepting that radio. Time for us to turn on 280 and arm that nav capture. So the batteries are charging slowly again. Yes, this is multiplayer, but since I'm flying a tour uh, in an area that is not too populated, uh, there's not players all over the world uh, at any time. Also realize there would not be a lot of traffic in this area. So, just taking a look. We are right here at the moment. That's our aircraft, and as you can see in Germany, at that time there's not much traffic anymore but all over the world there's some traffic so we're looking for the 35 DME and hopefully for some better weather Yes, oh, that's really bad. I agree. Uh, now here comes some better with visibility. Uh, let's check the weather right here. Oh no, visibility. Oop, 1,200 for the visibility. That sucks. But anyways, it's getting a little bit better. So now we are flying on the radio 250 to follow that until 35 DME. At that point we want to turn south, so we get the heading indicator turned to the south now. And capture the QDR90 PI. Uh, at the moment we're not yet receiving PI. Uh, we could just Put that on. I think that should be it. <laughs> nice. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, I'll just forgot some lights here. And of course, we want to make the bleeds on. At some point, the batteries should be recharged again.
really like that lottery. Oh, that's even a German lottery. It's an American lottery. That's white. France. Yes. So I can overspeed or, well, I, I don't have random failures at that point. That's just because I want to fly that tour and not uh, care too much about random failures. Okay, we are reaching the 35 dME mark. Ha! At just in time, now you can s hear a sound and you just saw the needle popping around. For some reason that needle did not pop around. Like that should do. Probably because that is connected to ADF2, while there is no ADF2, or there no t two se uh, there's not two separate ADF receivers. Okay, whatever. Or maybe that's just not working. So, and now we want to find the QDR 90 PI. And that means as soon as that needle is pointing towards 270, uh, with the HSI it's quite easy to do because we can just point that needle at 270. And as soon as there is that needle pointing towards it, you'll just turn in. Let's just verify by the sound that this is the correct NDB. So that short, long, long, short, short, short. Okay, that's it. Yeah, that's real life weather. That's not real life time because uh, it would be night at that time. Uh, but it is real, real world weather. So, two forty. Now we just need to make sure that that needle is always staying at 270. So when that is turning to the right, we need to fly to the right. When that is turning to the left, we need to fly to the left. Quite easy, isn't it? So 
And then we want to climb up a little bit. To fly over the control zone of... Shireen. Just one zero three one. Well, that's almost max speed. That's slow. And I'm flying kind of slow because I need to navigate. Flying VFR is all about seeing something and not about being in a hurry. So the needle is pointing a little bit towards there. You can see we're flying 240 indicated at the moment. And 255 is the limit. Also, we got some torque limits. That's also correct. Yeah, well, that green needle is not doing nothing. Hmm. Fortunately, I have no idea how to reset that. We'll just stop that timer at 14 minutes. 14. Because now the next task is we overfly the station and hold the course for about five, uh, five minutes. on second of all with that it's never charging to fall as it does. Uh, but it is recharging, I can tell. <laughs> it just takes ages. That's pretty weird because it went from 0 to 20 quite fast, but the last few percents are always a huge mess. That is always taking ages. And uh, yeah, there's one thing you gotta Regard so if you're switching on the generators, um, you gotta reset the inverter, and that will only work if you have the um, auto ignition disarmed, because otherwise the inverters will not reset and therefore <laughs> not producing any energy. Are you his dad? <laughs> yeah, the Q 
400 is very nice plane. So now we gotta watch that moment when we are overflying. That's the bing, and that means shortly we should be overflying the station. I think that's somewhere down there. Now, it has turned. Totally missed that point. And at 19 minutes, uh, we want to turn. So, pull that off. See, we're flying at 2500, that's Schwerin. It feels so low. That's strange. Uh, then we capture the QDM140 PI. So that means we want to capture that. That means we gotta fly in a manner that the needle will be pointing to 140. And uh, what we're gonna do is just turn right, uh, align parallel so that the yellow needle is pointing to the right. To Wonderland in Germany, it's um, and it has actually snowed even where I'm living. How did you learn this game from the start? Well, I started more than ten years ago when I was quite young. It was just like, yeah, wow, look at that airplanes. It was more like the Akkard style and. Uh, with the ongoing development of flight simulators and of course the hardware uh, that can run them um, and also with the development of more complex um, aircrafts it just thrilled me to also control or uh, manage those aircrafts so that's when you start to get into it and start reading. Um, how to operate them, watching tutorials. There are good tutorials about it. Look at that, better visibility. 17, five minutes to go, uh, two minutes to go. Also some slight turbulence is going up now.
funny how the ADF needle is spinning. It's the Beach 200, yes. How do you even notice the difference? I never noticed that. I think it's somewhere right here with the GPS. Other than that, so five minutes are over. So now this time we just gotta wait for the needle to cross the one four zero or a three two zero whatever that is. So now when the very easy basically when that red bar is at one hundred forty we just fly heading 140. Easy as that. I think that's the city of Schwerin, isn't it? No. City of Pindo. Oops, and that's an overcast layer. Thanks for following Game Attack. Unfortunately, the overcast layer is drawn by Skymax, it's not perfect. Although it's the highest quality already. But whatever. Okay. <laughs> I think the parametric pressure, pressure is changing, at least I hope. It does. Wow. Now there's also rain.
And the problem, however, is that uh, okay. Let's just try that. Wix edpo. Okay, great. That doesn't even work because now I can't even figure out what the barometric pressure is. So the latest information was QH is 1031. Because I'm afraid that I'm flying too low and violate the control zone. That would not be good. See, it's still charging, and that's been for like some time now. That aligned. Uh, we are now flying 140 pi over fly the QDM and then capture the QDR 190 and then enter the control zone via Sierra. We're coming closer, you can't see it, but I got my GPS on the second screen, so we're coming closer to PI again. Overflying that and now for the one nine zero. Eighty, one eighty-five. I want to turn back again. Oops, we're overshooting that a little bit. One ninety. Slightly overshot. Okay, and Sierra. 
the reporting point is the uh, that exit from the highway that is Sierra and that's to our right hand side we're going to slow down here a bit and put that landing lights on just going to do is follow that autobahn because now it's all VFR and that point right there you can see that that is the reporting point to enter the control zone and in order to enter the control zone we must descend below 2000 feet the control zone is 2,000 feet. The airport itself is 166 above mean sea level. So we we'll want to be 1,000 above in the traffic circuit. That will be 1,200. Now we just need to follow that road right here, as you can see, just follow that road to the city or to the airport. That's how you fly visually without any navigation aids. So we can basically shut that down. The winds, if I was not mistaken, should be also something like 230, so we're going to land on runway 24. So that's our time to shoot down the autopilot.
So base link here. So I won't forget the poppies on that airport. Ouch. I always forget that that gear is quite long on that aircraft. Basically no flare on that one. Are those textures gonna be released now? Thank you. A Russian flag over there. It's funny. So I think the general aviation planes have been parking over there. Hmm.
I'm going to scratch that with my wing again. Why would you be waiting for Rex to release a weather engine? That was the worst landing ever. It wasn't too bad because we had some nose up pitch. But it could have, could have flirted a little, a little bit more. Anyways, we landed safely. Pink. Too high. Should 
just do that from the inside. battery what are we going to do after this we're going to continue but first I think I'm going to do something right here be right back in a few minutes like 10 What I almost forgot was the lag report, of course. Um, is there something that we have to report in the lag report? No. Number two. Report lag. Report lag. So this was the task, fly to the north, intercept that radio, fly to the south, intercept that, overfly that for five minutes, intercept that, intercept that, enter via zero to the downwind and that's right there now I only want to see that uh, altitude profile right here because I really hope yes that we've also always been above 2000 feet when we were passing over that control zone perfect 
that's it.